Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Washington Foreign Press Center's On the Record virtual briefing. I'm Jean Fischetti, and I'm pleased to welcome our briefer, John Pachowski, Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs at the Department of State. Today, he will provide a readout of Secretary Blinken's virtual trip to Canada and Mexico. This unique virtual trip, which took place last Friday, February 26th, was a sign of the commitment by the United States to its relationship with these two countries. A quick review of the ground rules. This briefing is on the record. We will post the transcript of this briefing on our website, fpc.state.gov, after the event. If you publish a story as a result of this briefing, we would appreciate you sharing a link with your story by sending us uh, an email to dcfpc.state.gov. Deputy Assistant Secretary Pachowski will give opening remarks and then we will open it up for questions. If you do have a question, please go to the participant field and virtually raise your hand. At that time, we will unmute you and request you turn on your video so you can ask your question. If you wish to be on camera for the entire briefing, please go ahead and turn on your camera now. And last and most important, if you have not already done so, please rename your Zoom profile with your full name and name of your outlet so we can know who is asking questions. And with that, I will turn it over to Deputy Assistant Secretary Pachowski. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, good morning to everyone. Buenos dias, bonjour. Uh, it's a uh, pleasure for me to uh, speak to you today about Secretary Antony Blinken's trip, virtual trip to uh, Canada and Mexico, which as Jean said, took place last Friday, uh, February 26th. Uh, I think this conversation we're having today uh, comes uh, just after, I think, a, a seven-day period uh, where the United States relations with Canada and Mexico took center stage. And the virtual trip, I think, showed uh, the many ways our countries are bound together and the common opportunities we have, as well as the common challenges we face. Uh, I'd like to provide a quick recap of this virtual visit, which, as I said, I think spanned not only the government to government uh, relations, but also the people to people relations uh, and the public diplomacy ties that uh, our countries share. Uh, Secretary Blinken began his virtual visit to Mexico, and uh, he started that with a virtual tour of the El Paso, Paso del Norte border crossing between El Paso, Texas and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. This uh, visit highlighted our ongoing cooperation with Mexico to ensure legal, humane and safe immigration processing at the US-Mexico border, as well as the law enforcement uh, and border security operations that are there that seek to interdict shipments of drugs, uh, as well as promote travel or, or promote commerce between the two countries, given how important our commercial ties are. One of the things the secretary addressed is that the border is not open except for essential travel. People should not go to the border uh, to attempt to enter the United States right now. After that tour, the secretary held productive meetings with Mexican Foreign Secretary Marcelo Ebrard and Secretary of Economy Tatiana Poutier to discuss a broad range of topics, including migration, such as the wind down of the migrant protection protocols, combating COVID-19 and fueling economic recovery, enhanced economic integration, including through the USMCA implementation, as well as security, climate change, and other topics. After that, Secretary participated in a town hall with the staff of US Mission Mexico, which not only encompasses our embassy in Mexico City, but also consulates all along the US-Mexico border and in key cities in Mexico. After that, Secretary Blinken took his virtual trip north to Canada, where he met with both Prime Minister Trudeau and Foreign Minister Garneau. After the Secretary's meeting with, uh, 
Prime Minister Trudeau, Secretary Blinken discussed, sorry, uh, after President Biden's uh, meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau, Secretary Blinken discussed the United States and Canada's common approach to global challenges such as COVID-19 and our efforts to revitalize our economy, as well as our commitment to bold action on climate change, defending human rights around the globe, and bolstering our shared defense and security. During his visit to Canada, Secretary Blinken also expressed appreciation for our US Mission Canada employees. Uh, again, in a testament to our broad relations with Canada, we not only have an embassy in Ottawa, but consulates throughout Canada in the Canadian cities uh, that really work to strengthen the, the commercial ties, the people to people ties, and the security ties that bind us. Secretary Blinken also had an opportunity to meet with Canadian students to, to discuss climate change and the United States and Canada's shared priorities in the Arctic. This visit really laid the groundwork for our continued robust and regular engagement with our North American neighbors. Our three countries will be in close communication to find a way for our economies to continue their recovery in a manner that is safe for everyone as we respond to COVID-19 which is the challenge of our times. We're very proud of our successful efforts to date to maintain critical supply chains and keep our borders open to essential travel. This has allowed trade to continue flowing between our countries, all the while prioritizing the health and safety of our citizens. Uh, following up on President Biden's and Secretary Blinken's meetings, the United States is committed to working together with Mexico to implement a comprehensive approach to regional migration that includes addressing the root causes of irregular migration in the region, promoting trade and investment for the benefit of our peoples and improving security cooperation. Hopefully all of you saw President Biden's, uh, uh, saw the joint declaration between the United States and Mexico following President Biden's March 1st meeting with uh, Mexican President Lopez Obrador, uh, it outlined our bilateral commitment to immigration policies that recognize the dignity of migrants and the imperative of orderly, safe and regular migration, joint efforts to address the root causes, to improve migration management, and to develop legal pathways for migration, as well as collaboration to respond to COVID-19 to use the US-Mexico-Canada agreement as a driver for North American prosperity and labor rights, and restarting the high-level economic dialogue and tackling the climate crisis. Lastly, I would just uh, wanna say on Canada, through the US-Canada partnership roadmap, the United States looks forward to working closely with Canada to respond to COVID-19 and support inclusive economic recovery address the pressing challenge of climate change, including through the launch of the high-level climate ministerial, strengthening economic ties and building back better our supply chains and energy infrastructure, uh, promoting defense through NATO and NORAD, and exploring cross-cutting issues related to continental security, economic and social development, and Arctic governance through the launch of an expanded U.S.-Canada Arctic Dialogue. Our democratic values, cultural ties, and interconnected economies make the United States, Canada, and Mexico natural partners. And we look forward to building on those partnerships in the months ahead. With that, I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you. If you have a question, you can use the raise hand feature or use the, the chat. Okay, Isabella, if you may go ahead. Hi, I'm Isabella Gonzalez, a reporter from Latinus in Mexico. And I want to ask Jan if, um, if the United States government uh, mm -hmm. asked Mexico something 
related with the new uh, electric reform that Mexico approved uh, this, uh, this night. Well, uh, thank you, Isabella, for the question and uh, hello. Um, well, you know, when it comes to uh, energy, of course, both of our countries have uh, very uh, connected uh, economies and energy sectors. And so uh, we have heard concerns, I think, from the private sector. And um, at the same time, we respect uh, Mexico's sovereignty and uh, the process that Mexico is uh, undergoing right now. Um, I would say that uh, we believe that uh, transparency is very important for uh, investors. And uh, uh, we look forward to continuing cooperation and continuing discussions with Mexico and all sectors where our uh, economies uh, are uh, connected. Thank you. Uh, for our next question, we'll go to one of the submitted questions because I don't believe he was able to join today. And it's from James McCartan of the Canadian Press. He asked, did Secretary Blinken provide Canada any assurances regarding the issue of the Line 3 and Line 5 pipeline projects? And is the State Department involved in any current reviews of these projects, given that they cross the Canada-US border? Thank you for that question. Uh, I think uh, this question shows, uh, again, the uh, interconnectedness uh, between our economies. Uh, when it comes to uh, energy and uh, energy transportation, you know, the United States is, is working very closely with Canada. We're having discussions that are looking at uh, all of the facets of, of, of energy, uh, not only our uh, energy security, but also our uh, responsibilities uh, to climate change uh, as our countries really try to uh, build um, uh, energy production that um, really meets our uh, commitments to uh, addressing climate change. So uh, that is all uh, part of our uh, uh, robust and multifaceted dialogue uh, that's going on between uh, Canada and the United States. Great, thank you. Our next question is from Emir Olivares. Please go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good morning. Hello. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, what is the expectation on the immigration uh, uh, topic and what, uh, will the, what will be the collaboration for Mexico? Uh, I'm sorry, it, did you ask what uh, will be the expectation uh, and immigration uh, topic and what, uh, what is uh, the Mexican collaboration? Okay, uh, well, thank you for that question. I mean, uh, I think it is clear, I, I think the United States has been clear that we believe that um, uh, the way to confront irregular uh, migration uh, is going to involve a number of countries uh, really dealing with um, a number of aspects. One part is uh, border security. Uh, countries, uh, I know, want to ensure that their borders are safe and secure. Uh, I think we also uh, need to ensure that um, there are legal pathways for uh, those seeking to migrate. I think we also have to look at uh, uh, capacity for uh, processing asylum. That is, uh, I think, uh, incumbent on countries that have made commitments um, there. Uh, and then uh, I think the last piece and the most important piece really is uh, what I said uh, in terms of our commitment to work together to address the root causes of migration. Uh, when people are seeking better economic opportunities, uh, when they're seeking safer communities in which to raise their children. Um, you know, I think uh, it, it shows that uh, all of us have work to do. The United States is committed not only to working with governments in the region, but with the private sector, uh, civil society organizations, and uh, our international uh, organization partners too, to really to work and to uh, address this. Because I think it's important for us to remember that um, 
when people leave their communities, their countries, their homelands, their native language, um, the tastes and smells that they've grown up with, when they leave all of those things behind, uh, they're really, uh, I think, signaling that um, uh, that they, they're looking for something better. Uh, and I believe that uh, with our cooperation uh, with Mexico and with countries in Central America and elsewhere, we can help restore hope for people so that they can prosper at home. Thank you. Great. Our next question comes from Alexander Panetta with the CBC. Go ahead, Alex. Hi. Um, just had a couple of questions about different asks that Canada would have uh, on some of the issues you've uh, you've um, brought up. One is on migration, and the other is on uh, energy cooperation. So, based on migration, the one thing Canada has been hoping to do for the last couple of years is have a, a conversation about. Uh, upgrading the safe third country agreement between Canada and the U.S. Uh, so that it applies to uh, crossings at irregular border checkpoints. So I'm, A, I'm wondering whether there's any um, uh, consideration about upgrading that safe third country agreement with Canada. And on energy cooperation, I guess the big request from Canada these days is, is whether it'll be, I mean, if it's an energy partner, would it be subjected to buy American provisions in in, uh, in, a, in a clean energy legislation that the administration hopes to see pass Congress? So those are the two things that I'm wondering. Well, uh, thank you for those questions. Uh, again, I think uh, the questions you pose really stand, uh, really show the uh, connections uh, between the United States, between our thousands of miles of uh, border, uh, which are not defended, of course, um, and uh, you know, largely uh, very peaceful uh, border checkpoints. Um, I don't have any uh, news uh, to make here or any updates to provide on safe third country agreements. Um, I know that um, uh, the border and operations at the border remain a very important uh, area of discussion uh, between our two countries, especially right now with the uh, restrictions in place uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, different Buy American provisions, uh, we've heard these questions uh, posed uh, with respect to uh, a recent executive order that uh, President Biden signed. Um, you know, the United States uh, has long had a variety of Buy American provisions. Um, at the same time, uh, we know we have, uh, there are WTO uh, procurement commitments um, and uh, government procurement is, at the end of the day, a very complex process. I think that the robust supply chains uh, that currently exist between the United States and Canada will continue to be robust. And we'll work with uh, our partners in Canada uh, on uh, all of the different issues that come up, whether we're talking uh, market access, uh, procurement regulations, uh, or, or, or whatever we may uh, find. Uh, I think uh, the past has shown that the dynamic uh, economic relations between our countries uh, gives us a, a great base to build upon. Thank you. Great. Our next question uh, goes to Bricio Segovia. Please go ahead. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, John. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. I'm Brisa Segovia with uh, Mexico's MVS Radio. I have two questions, if I may. I'll ask the first one first. Um, so President Lopez Obrador met with uh, President Joe Biden, and uh, he made very clear that two of the proposals that he wanted to put on the table uh, was, number one, uh, Bracero-style immigrant labor program to bring uh, legal immigration from Mexico and Central America to the U.S. And uh, second uh, proposal was actually um, uh, um, uh, well, let's start with this proposal. Actually, <laughs> is is that something that the uh, uh, Department of State has considered? Even I mean, either during those that meeting, that virtual trip with Secretary Ebrard. And uh, oh, by the way, the other proposal was the possibility of sending vaccines to Mexico. Is are those proposals something that has come up in conversations at the Department of State during that visit or after that? Because the White House didn't mention, didn't make any mentions to those proposals from President Obrador. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Um, well, you know, as I said, um, when we are 
talking about, when the United States is talking about uh, confronting uh, irregular migration, we are really looking at trying to find a, a, you know, a broad-based approach. Uh, I mentioned uh, expanding legal pathways. Uh, so that is something we will look at. Uh, I'm not sure what will uh, come out and exactly what style of, uh, of, 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 of initiative there will be. Um, but beyond that, you know, we are looking uh, and talking to Mexico uh, about ways that we can work together uh, to address those root causes, those drivers of migration, the lack of economic opportunity, uh, citizen insecurity, uh, all of the things that make people uh, want to uh, pull up roots and uh, leave their uh, home countries and communities behind. So I am sure that in the coming days, weeks, and months, we will uh, continue to have conversations with Mexico on how we can work uh, better together um, to uh, really uh, improve the prosperity for all of our citizens. Thank you. So that, that wasn't actually brought up during this virtual trip. Uh, between uh, Secretary Ebrard and uh, Secretary of State Lincoln? Well, I'm not going to get into uh, specifics of our diplomatic conversations. Uh, I think what I've uh, highlighted really shows uh, the many ways that we can work together, the United States and Mexico, uh, on these common uh, challenges. Because I think both of our uh, leaders see that um, the common challenges also bring with them uh, common opportunities to uh, benefit our citizens, um, whether they live uh, north of the Rio Grande or to the south. And if I may ask my second question, it's also on immigration. Um, as, uh, as the Department of State and the White House and the HS made very clear, the U.S. is not processing or not accepting, I should say, new um, uh, asylum applications at the moment at the southern border. Uh, has the U.S. or the Department of State uh, assessed the consequences of bringing to a halt uh, these applications at the moment. And I'm talking about uh, migrants who might have a legitimate case and are fleeing their countries uh, for legitimate reasons right now. Well, look, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think that the um, the fact that the the president, uh, the president Biden one of his first actions in office was to, um, you know, address the uh, migrant protection protocols uh, program. Um, and so uh, the United States has begun uh, processing some of these uh, claims. I think going forward, the United States has said, we want to ensure that migration to the United States, United States is safe, that it's humane, uh, that it's legal, uh, and I think um, you saw in the uh, in the declaration between Presidents Biden and Lopez Obrador um, the mention of uh, the dignity of migrants. Um, all of us uh, are as, as as humans, uh, you know, have human rights, and uh, each of us has uh, has human dignity. It's it's very important we remember that. I think the United States, uh, in the approach that we've laid out. Um, is uh, keeping that in mind. Uh, it's recognizing that those who uh, are making this arduous journey and leaving their families behind uh, really feel a, a certain desperation. Um, I think we will have further uh, announcements later, uh, but right now our focus is on maintaining uh, the health and safety of our citizens at the border. Um, and uh, really processing those uh, it, with active cases in the uh, MPP. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, our next question will go to Jose Diaz Briseño. Jose, please go ahead. Thank you for doing this. I have two quick questions. One, uh, was the access to vaccines for US residents in Mexico a matter of conversation? What's the position of the US government regarding that? Shall all US residents in Mexico have access to that? And second, uh, was the recently passed uh, security law in Mexico a, a matter of conversation between both um, a Secretary of State and a Secretary of Brad? Thanks. Um, look, security cooperation between the United States uh, and Mexico uh, is strong. And uh, I think it's strong because both of our countries 
uh, understand the challenges that we face from uh, transnational criminal organizations that are smuggling uh, you know, drugs across the, uh, the border. Um, we are uh, dedicated to working with Mexico to ensure that our security cooperation uh, remains robust, um, that it's rooted in our, um, uh, our, our shared uh, challenges, the shared threats that we face. Uh, and at the same time, we uh, absolutely respect Mexico's uh, sovereignty and, and understand uh, their desire to, um, to uh, you know, control, you know, uh, their side of, uh, of our border. But uh, we'll be working with Mexico going forward to ensure that our cooperation is strong so that we can uh, make our countries uh, in our streets uh, safer for our citizens. I'm sorry, but what about access to vaccines for U.S. residents in Mexico? Was that a matter of discussion? What's the policy regarding that that the U.S. government wants? Look, our approach uh, overall, the United States, uh, to uh, vaccines is ensuring that, uh, that uh, U.S. citizens uh, get uh, vaccines. But at the same time, we know that uh, the only way we'll really be able to uh, manage and, and, and hopefully uh, put an end to the pandemic is through international cooperation. And I think you've seen uh, the Biden administration's commitment to international uh, cooperation on the pandemic uh, by rejoining the uh, World Health Organization. Uh, and more recently with a uh, up to a $4 billion uh, commitment to the uh, COVAX uh, vaccine. So, um, We'll be discussing further, uh, both with Canada and Mexico, um, ways that we can work together to, uh, to ensure that uh, public health in, in North America is strengthened. Shall U.S. citizens in Mexico have access to the vaccine, sir? Well, I'm not, um, uh, not a public health expert, so I don't know the exact uh, pipelines on that. No, but you are you 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 take care of uh, U.S. citizens' concerns in while in while abroad, specifically in Mexico. Uh, you know, you have a consular affairs department over there. Uh, are you pushing Mexico to vaccinate U.S. residents in Mexico? This is a question that many U.S. residents have posed me as a reporter. Okay, I'm happy to take that question. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, Isabella Gonzalez von Hausk, and forgive me if I said that wrong. She has a follow-up question uh, she would like to ask. Please go ahead, Isabella. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I I didn't understand if the Mexican if the Mexican reform of the electric industry was something that the presidents talk about in the virtual meeting or in the meeting between Secretary Ebrard and Secretary Lincoln. I, will, I would like to know if, if it was a topic indeed. Sure, well, we, I think, have been um, in conversations with, uh, with Mexico uh, at all levels, at a number of levels, um, at various points in time. Uh, conveying what we, uh, you know, what we are hearing, um, and you know, the 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 our sense that there needs to be uh, transparency uh, for uh, private sector investors uh, in the energy sector. You know, even as we respect uh, Mexico's sovereignty and uh, you know their sovereign rights to uh, to enact laws. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I want to thank everybody for your wonderful questions today and a special thanks to Deputy Assistant Secretary Pachowski for giving uh, his time to answer all these questions today. Thank you everyone and this briefing is now concluded. <laughs>